This is the Candidates Forum. It's put on by the Narva Civic Association. And uh, I'd like to just say a little bit about the Civic Association, and then I'm going to turn the evening over to George Lonsdorf, who's on the board, who's going to moderate the discussion tonight. Um, the Civic Association is going to celebrate its 100th anniversary next year. It's going to be 100 years old in 2014, March of 2014 to be precise. So we are uh, actively recruiting uh, board members because we need some people to come and help us celebrate and help us to, to make it a good, you know, put on good events for next year. So if you're interested in uh, serving the community and being a part of a group and uh, doing fun stuff, uh, you can talk to me, you can talk to Georgette, you can email the Civic at uh, NCA at narberthcivic.org, which is on our website at www.narberthcivic.org. But before we get started, I would just like to make one electioneering plug. I'm going to be on the ballot for voters of South Narberth as the inspector of election. So if for no other reason, come out to vote on uh, November 5th, isn't it? Yes. Good. <laughs> My first year here, I lived across the street from uh, from uh, Bob Waybright. Uh, got to hear a little bit about what the council was doing. Uh, got interested in uh, some of the issues around the new uh, zoning policy that's being worked on and parking. And I think I bothered Bob and Andrew Deutsch and Bill Martin enough about some of those things that they said, you know, if you're so interested. <laughs> ID and Andrew are trying to take a step back and we can, you know, use somebody who's that engaged to get involved. So um, I think we've got a great, uh, a great borough with a lot of uh, very active support, uh, both within the borough government and organizations like the Civic Association and the Business Association. And I would love to try to help out where I can. Um, I work as a as an investor um, and have a decent amount of budget oversight ex, uh, experience. Can pr probably bring that to bear, and so I'm excited to help out on uh, things like the highway committee, and then also general uh, oversight and planning of the budget and long-term capital plans. Uh, so very excited to try to be of use to the to the borough and, and to the borough council. Well, I'm certainly interested in picking up some of the good work that council's already done on the zoning code, and then also I'm an employment and labor lawyer now by trade. So I think I can bring something to bear in both the uniform and non-uniform labor negotiations uh, coming up in two years and three years down the line. Uh, something right within uh, what I do uh, every day in my practice representing management's interests. So I think I can bring a lot to bear there to help the community. Thank you. So it's nice to see some new faces. Welcome. Uh, I am running for my second term on Borough Council. Um, uh, my interest focus, uh, business administration of the borough, the finances of the borough, I run my own business, uh, a lot of experience with hiring and firing and employees and employment issues, um, and also um, public safety. I'm a volunteer firefighter here, and I have a lot of interest in uh, not, not only the fire protection of the community, but also police and public safety. So. Hi, my name is Regina Watson. I'm running for tax collector. Um, I've been the tax collector in Arvin since 1999. Um, I enjoy working with people one on one and I'm um, really looking forward to doing it for the next four years. Um, I see myself as a big cheerleader for the borough, trying to promote the borough as much as possible, as well as interacting with council and managing our police department. I act as an intermediary, putting forth their laws and telling what, what they expect of the police department and, and have a great police department as well. And I look forward to serving the borough again. Thank you. you know, every year, you go into the year thinking, what will we have ahead of us in Narberth? And the issues that come up just completely surprise us all. At the same time, you know, we look at the town and it's, it's pretty wonderful. We have you know, a complete, vibrant downtown. I'm involved in business with a lot of small businesses. So I like to see that almost all of our shops are filled and they're interesting. It's a, it's a place that adds a lot of value to our homes and our life. Um, I have been on the Civic Association board for a few years before I got involved in council. I was on the planning commission. I was running the uh, t-shirt soccer program. So, you know, it's just a natural extension to continue to be involved and um, spend some time with the borough and the rest of the council trying to make things better for everybody for the long run. So, thank you for coming out. 
tonight. So I'm going to start with this, uh, the intersection up here, just on the other side of the train tunnel between, the, I think it's East Windwood and North Windwood roads. Um, so my understanding is, is that the current borough council favors a traffic circle around about there, and Lower Marion has voted in favor of a traffic light. So it sounds like everybody agrees that something has to be done, but I'm not sure you know, what's the next step and how does that get resolved? And for those who are not on, currently on the council, do you uh, want to weigh in on your opinion on what's needed over there? As a challenge, it's an odd-shaped road. It's got different angles. You have the left turn coming out of the tunnel. And about three or four years ago, when we attempted at PennDOT to slow the traffic speed from 35 to 25, uh, it didn't meet the warrants that PennDOT requires to do that. But what they did instead was they resurfaced the road with a high traction surface. They re-striped the lanes, and it did improve it. Did it improve it enough? Neither us, neither us, or Lower Marion really feel that it's it's where we it could be. Um, and then, unfortunately, in December, a 16-year-old pedestrian was crossing the road and got struck by a vehicle. It wasn't excessive speed or anything of that nature. It just was a a bad situation where sight lines and such occurred. She was pretty badly hurt. Um, at that point, a lot of residents got involved and said, we need to do something here. Uh, it was Rogan from Lower Marion, myself, we met, we talked. Um, the knee-jerk reaction was, when you have a bad intersection, you put a traffic light up there. What happened in the interim, Bob Weisbord, Mike Alexander, and others um, pointed out that, you know, traffic lights are not necessarily the end-all, be-all answer. Um, there are a lot of things about traffic lights that are not so good, and there's some really interesting things being done with the modern roundabout, and we don't like to use the traffic circle word because it's, that's the, probably the biggest issue with the modern roundabout is the perception of the New Jersey traffic circle. So over the course of the next five or six months, uh, pretty much led by Mike Alexander, we um, you know, kept getting information, different experts, the Federal Highway Administration got involved, they came up, um, our traffic planner, Pannoni, uh, looked into it. A, another guy, Mike Mastiglio from RKK, who also serves PennDOT in uh, capacity in different regions as being a traffic circle roundabout expert got involved. Uh, the Delaware Allen Regional Planning Commission got involved and sent one of their uh, traffic engineers to help us. And even Montgomery County, um, Leo Begley and the uh, traffic person at the county looked at this. And what we found out was three key things. It was there's 90% less fatalities, 70% less severe injuries, and 30% less overall accidents when you put in these modern roundabouts. We had the engineers look, will this fit in this space? Because it's a pretty tight space, and that was my instinct was, there's no way this would fit. And the answer was, it absolutely fits. It accommodates large trucks, it accommodates the traffic flow. They looked at the traffic current levels, they looked at the projected patterns, they looked at the projected patterns with a 250 unit development, with a 500 unit development, with Whole Foods putting in a 60,000 foot um, project. And in all cases, even with those projections 10, 20 years out, the traffic roundabout would accommodate this and provide us all those additional safety benefits. So with five experts telling us this is the safest thing to do, that it will work, it will fit, and the cost being nominally different over the what you look at as a 10 or 20 year plan, it's about 325,000 for a, a roundabout, 230,000 for a traffic light. It was hard for the members of council to do anything but say, this is what would be best for our community, Lower Marion, and all the people that either drive or walk or bike through this intersection. The expert the problem with traffic lights is if you do have an, an accident, it's either a T-bone accident where the car smashes into it, it's a higher speed rear end accident, or people are driving 35 to 45 miles when the light is green. So if there's an accident, they're going at a pretty high speed. The modern roundabout, which is cool about it, is the way it's designed it forces you down to 15, 20 miles at most. And if you do have an accident, it's at a very soft angle, it's not at a direct angle. And in addition, because you're driving that slow, you have a better sight line of the pedestrians. And because of the configuration where it's brought down to one lane in each direction, a pedestrian, when they cross, 
one has to look one way. And they get to the middle to a safety area, and then they go on. So we brought it up to Lower Marion. Um, there's a lot of perceptions out there. We spoke at the Marion Civic Association. We spoke at the Short Ridge Civic Association. And uh, perception is reality for people. And, and they have these, this belief of what the New Jersey traffic circles are, which are different. They're higher speed, they're multi-lane. And despite our efforts, you know, we couldn't convince all the people. There were a lot of people in Lower Marion that embraced it. Uh, Commissioners George Manos, Brian McGuire, Brian Gordon, absolutely, Scott Zella, they all said this is something that has a, you know, a real opportunity here for our community. And uh, it went in front of one of their committees and it got approved 7-6. And then through whatever mechanisms and such, it went through the, the uh, general board meeting and unfortunately that got reversed to 8-5, something like that, 6-7-5. It wasn't a, a big difference, but it was enough to say that they were going to go and approach it from the traffic line perspective. Um, you know, we looked at that and we said, we're elected here by the people to you know do what we think is best, and uh, darn if we're going to like put something in that we know there's a better solution. So we're going to PennDOT. We're presenting the case. We'll be sending a letter to them, hopefully this week, probably next week. Uh, we'll be sending it to um, Mary Jo Daly, our state representative, who's here. We'll be sending it to Dale and Leach. We'll be sending it to almost all the parties involved and ask PennDOT to use their expertise and uh, hopefully they'll agree with us and since they are in command of that road, um, make a decision. So it is PennDOT's ultimately, is their decision? It should be, there's a lot of question mark of, you know, if they have the empowerment to tell our Marion, to tell us, but the bottom line is they, it's their road, it's a PennDOT road and without their, I'm not gonna say blessing, but their authorization, their you know, belief that it's a good thing, it, it certainly wouldn't happen. So we're gonna have to see what PennDOT says. Yeah. And for me, I'm very interested in pedestrian connections to the periphery of Dartmouth and making sure that we have good pedestrian access for us to go, you know, walk outside of Narberth, but also to bring more people on foot in to the center of town to shop. I mean, more more people coming into Narberth helps us support some amenities that we all use. Um, and in, in addition to the public safety issue, and I've, I've gotten real close to getting in a wreck there myself a couple times, so uh, I'm keenly interested in it. You know, I my first, I had the same first reaction that everybody probably does, which was, oh, traffic light, that's easy. And then I started to, you know, read some of the uh, information that um, Michael posted after they started to do research and started to follow you know, a lot of what Bob was saying is pretty well documented and they've, they've done actually a very good job of getting that information out there. Um, I'm, I'm very convinced and the data really support that the best solution would be a new round uh, and it's pretty widely used um, in the Northeast especially uh, these, these days. And uh, that said, I think PennDOT is kind of the arbiter of what can happen there mm -hmm. and I think this is another little bit of evidence that sometimes we're just a little corner of Lower Marion uh, Township and maybe on, on issues that affect the borough, uh, the Lower Marion commissioners aren't necessarily going to spend the same amount of time that the borough council will on issues that are important in Arborth and uh, it so may not be possible. Now, Some of those numbers I think that you heard Bob articulate are pretty staggering, 90% less fatalities. I think 30% less auto access is one of the ones you uh, uh, riddled off. Uh, I have some experience in uh, uh, cities like DC, which has uh, less of the modern roundabout and more of the traffic circle, but I've also seen some of the more modern roundabouts where I'm originally from down in Florida. I think they're very effective. Um, where I've seen in Florida, an area where it's a very high speed area, uh, they've been very effective in slowing down and eliminating similar thoughts, uh, accidents, those types of things that were occurring in those neighborhoods. Um, I like that uh, council tried to run it up through the, uh, the township. Um, obviously, it was not approved, but uh, I like that they're kind of sticking by their guns and have decided to press it further with PennDOT, uh, press it further uh, with uh, Dale and Leach, with Mary Jo, um, and see if that yields any results, because I do think it is the right decision. So I've, I've read in Narbonne, I've read in the Mainline Times about you know all the, a lot of break-ins in the in the area in the vicinity. Do you think that uh, Narbonne and the surrounding areas are becoming more crime-ridden or dangerous? And 
No, I don't believe she would come to anywhere. I just think we have to be more vigilant. Unfortunately, in Arbor, a lot of us uh, leave our doors open and our windows open. And it, it, it's nice, but we have to just go, go back and re-educate ourselves to keep our doors locked and to take security measures ourselves. There are burglaries, but there's ways to address those burglaries by having everyone look after each other. We're all in this together, pretty much, with regards to the burglaries. And if we keep an eye on our neighbors and we do certain precautions on our homes as far as keeping our doors locked and our windows shut, we'll get through this. Um, you have a new town watch. Don't you? Yeah, we have a town watch as well, which has been going walking through the town. And it's, it's great if anyone's interested in the town watch, um, bring a dog. It's a great time to walk around the neighborhood and, and look at the different houses. We just tell people if they notice anything unusual, just to report to the police. Dial 911. They'll come out. Our officers are love to go out and see people. And, you know, <laughs> and, and, and they'll catch up with you and talk to you for a bit too. And that's why it's really important. Our emphasis for the Narbonne Police Department is patrols. We want our officers out on the street. We want them patrolling. We want them walking around or on their bikes. And the bike program this year has been very successful. We probably saw them on the south side and for our downtown. We put the bike, bike officers around. Does the uh, Borough Council's Public Safety Committee deal with issues like this? Is that part of their program? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, while the mayor deals with the operational daily details of the police force, public safety works more with uh, civil service in terms of hiring, um, works with the budget. So, and, you know, how are the, what are the amount of money that's allocated to the department? What are the things that they're going to be buying and using? Um, but also uh, as a conduit, because people will look under public safety, contact me about an issue, contact the committee, and then we work very closely with the mayor in that regard. And um, in regards to this, this issue, I think there's a couple things to keep in mind. Um, Superintendent McGrath had a, had a meeting that was very well covered by the Mainline Times recently, uh, and I'm sure can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he said that at last, last year at this time, he had 21 burglaries in Lower Marion Township, and this year he has 25 burglaries. Now, technically that's a 20% increase, but when you're dealing with small numbers, you know, they can jump around year to year. Um, he did not, and I'm sure I could call and ask, get the numbers for years back. Maybe one year it was 17, another year it was 27. The fact is, is one, we have Facebook. Uh, we have people getting anxious and scared, and it, it kind of amplifies in your mind the threat. And I think that people need to take the simple common sense precautions. Lock your doors, lock your car, you know, leave a light on, leave a radio going. Um, there's, the, the, you get a dog, <laughs> only if you're gonna take good care of it. And, uh, you know, these are the things that have worked for uh, literally hundreds of years to keep people off of your, you know, from burglarizing your property. Um, and uh, it's not to feed into kind of a public uh, anxiety about it. Um, and I think McGrath also pointed out very, very accurately, people are not looking to invade your home and uh, terrorize you. They want some stuff. And they're going to take the least uh, difficult option to do that. So just the simple fact of locking your windows and your doors is going to go a long way so that they'll choose somebody else's property. Um, that would be my advice in answering your question. But Obviously, Public Safety Committee is a place that anybody can come and address any concerns that they have um, in terms of their interaction with the police or their interaction with crime. So I'd like to uh, ask Regina uh, a question. Now, if you're probably, uh, uh, at least to me, like a little less visible in, in your role at the borough than, than the borough council members or the mayor. Can you, can you tell me what does the tax collector do? And, um, should I fear you like I do the IRS? <laughs> um, basically, I collect taxes for the county, the borough, and the school district. So, from the citizens of the borough on behalf of not just the borough, but Lower Marion and okay. Montgomery County? Mm -hmm. So, when I get that letter, uh, that comes from you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, is there anything... Uh, I don't know. Do you, what do you have any? Uh, do you have any uh, programs or goals or anything like that? I'm not. I'm not quite sure if, if yours is a kind of a, a proactive office where you, you can actually influence the way things happen, or are you more of an administrative position? 
Well, I think what we'd like to see happen is we'd like to see the collection come to its closest 100% as that we can get. And we've really tried over the years to get it there. Um, we send out reminder notices before the end of the phase period um, so that people have the opportunity not to have to pay the penalty you know, if they've forgotten. Um, and at the end of the year, we, you know, to make sure that you know they all know that you know something has not been paid, and um, we do we're pretty successful. Um, we get close to 99 percent so, by the end of the year. Moving, moving on to another subject, I think one of the things that's near and dear to everybody who lives and visits Narberth uh, is the you know the, the, the quality of the of the, the fabric of the town, the buildings, the streets, the the, the density, or the, you know the, the different densities of the town. And I know that we're undertaking like a big project to rezone it or reform our zoning. What it tries, to, what form zoning tries to do is deal with the fact that in a community like this that was built before zoning, that you have almost everything is non-conforming, right? Almost everything doesn't conform to the code that then was adopted, um, which creates all these you know, grandfathered uses and <coughs> uses that can be orphaned and lost. And this tries to clean that up, and it also cleans it up in a way that makes it a lot more accessible, in my opinion, for someone who is not a land use expert to go down to the borough hall or go to the library, open the book and understand it. Because it has a lot of diagrams, um, whereas the code right now is just text. You know, paragraph one, subsection C, Roman numeral three, then it goes on and on forever. This is much more easy to understand. You say, oh, what kind of zone do I live in? Okay, turn to that page. Oh, well, I live in this type of home. I live in a detached, I live in a, a multi-unit apartment building less than six units, okay? And here's the diagram of what I can do and how close I can come to the street. And um, honestly, I think, it's, I think it's great. And it also has been a great job for us to inventory our assets. What does the borough have? What types of properties does it have? What types of properties are under threat? So what should we be worried about looking at other communities that maybe have not been as proactive and have all of a sudden you look around and say, oh, what happened to all those beautiful buildings that were all demolished and turned into townhouses? And all the townhouses look exactly the same with, you know, they're just literally, someone pulled out of a book, townhouse plan 5A. You make a hundred of them. Um, the form zoning code is really going to help us to understand that and maintain the fabric of what makes these streets so charming and lovely, you know, with the fall leaves and everyone is a little different and they're not all the same and nobody will be able to um, build a house that is a gigantic glass box that doesn't fit in, um, nor will they have a problem if, God forbid, a house burned down. Under our current zoning code, it may be very difficult for them to rebuild what was exactly there. So they may want to build a replica of the home that they had, and they would not be allowed to do so. And this addresses that. Under the current zone. Under the current code. Yeah. Now, uh, I know we have a, a planning commission, and they're the ones who are working directly with this, uh, with the Montgomery County Planning Commission to, I guess, get the draft. And then what role does the uh, borough council have in this finally? I guess they recommend, and then you vote on it, change I think it? it? It will become public. I think there will be a lot of public comment and there will be more information sessions like there have been in this room. Um, at some point it will be finalized and it will come to Borough Council to vote and approve and uh, to add it to the Borough, to the borough of Norbert's Code so that it will become law. So uh, uh, Charlie or Richard, uh, you guys are probably gonna, certainly going to get a, a crack at, at this and uh, seeing what comes forth and perhaps offering you know, amendments or changes to it. Um, are you keeping abreast of the developments there and do you have any you know, opinions or views on the art, architecture and planning? What I do for this one? Yeah, I'll take it. So I, I admittedly um, have to spend more time getting when it comes out in the third form, uh, really kind of digging into it deeply. I've, I've had conversations with current members of council. Uh, certainly something I'm interested in. I, I get it conceptually as Aaron just described, uh, but something I'm going to have to spend more time digging into uh, in the two months leading into January. And it's a, the draft is not public, so right. you know, Richard and Charlie yeah, have no way to But I, I am generally aware, you know, you had mentioned obviously the, the 206 price, the redevelopment there, um, I have sat down with Bill Martin, looked at both the Berry Houses. I forget the other names of the properties, but there is the, uh, I know 
Heidi has spent a lot of time working on the, the property that will be right on price and how that's going to design. It's a three unit, but the outside doesn't have the look of a three unit. It has something that really matches off. Uh, I, I think the development plans, there's also then, I believe, a third property that's either one or two units. I think it's conceptually a great design, underground parking for the Berry House, off the street behind the housing, parking for the other two structures, if I'm correct. Under, under the church, there will be parking. Right, under the, the that's the Berry House. house is, no, the Berry House that's is a the house. house. It's a big house. Excellent, so I was incorrect there with the names. But underneath, so what is now the church, which would be a multi-unit facility, is the underground parking behind the Berry House and behind the third structure. It's my understanding, and I think uh, Aaron, uh, Charles, and I were talking about that there's actually two other developments that are, are coming up very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the property behind the St. Margaret's Parish. I believe that is already something that has a deal in place. I think the current members of uh, council, I have the mayor, might go speak a little more authoritatively on that. And then there's another church, I don't know what the denomination is, on the other side of the bridge that I think uh, Charles has a lot, Baptist, excuse me, that Charles has more familiarity with. So I think all of those. Uh, will be in some kind of stage of development when we're on council and, and things that we'll get to uh, spend our time and energy and thoughts on.